Hi, in this video we're going to begin our discussion on Windows 11 file management by talking about some Windows 11 file system fundamentals. So I figured it would be a good idea to start with the basics or kind of basics before we get into the more complicated stuff here. Alright, so the file system in Windows 11 is a foundational part of how the operating system stores, organizes, and accesses data on internal drives, external drives, and network locations. So you're going to have file systems on all these devices. So anything that can actually store files needs to have a file system. You know, and that even goes for devices such as flash drives, uh, DVDs, and so on. And of course, you could have different file systems on different devices depending on what those devices are. All right, so a file system is the method and data structure an operating system uses to manage files on a disk or partition. It defines how files are named, stored, organized, and retrieved. When you format a drive, you're repairing it with a specific file system so that Windows can interact with it. So if you've ever used the Windows Disk Management tool, uh, you've probably formatted drives and seen how the various partitions are laid out and that type of thing. So let's check that out real quick. All right, so to access Disk Management, so simply type it in the search box here. It's the easiest way. Then you want to pick the option Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. Alright, so we can see this computer here, expand this a little bit here, has two internal drives and a removable flash drive. See it's called SanDisk right there. So we have our disk zero with three partitions. So normally when you install Windows, it's going to make more than just the one main partition. Uh, you'll have your EFI system partition and your recovery partition. And then we have this secondary disk here, which is just one big partition taking up all 100 gigs of the space. And then we have our SanDisk flash drive here. And if we scroll down, we have our CD-ROM using the U3 system, CDFS, compared to NTFS. And then this flash drive is NTFS, which... You may or may not see, you can do it NTFS, but a lot of people tend to use different file systems, which we'll be talking about in a second here. And then you have your summary up here, which breaks down all of the volumes to match this. All right, so let's continue our discussion on file system fundamentals. All right, so we have some key components and concepts here. So drives and partitions, which you saw in disk management. So your physical storage can be divided into one or more partitions or volumes. You could kind of use that term interchangeably. Each volume is assigned a drive letter, like C, D, and E, by Windows, and it's treated as a distinct volume by the file system. And then you have the system drive, which is also the Windows drive, typically the C drive. And that, of course, contains the operating system. All right, then we have files and folders. So obviously, uh, this file system is going to be using files stored within folders, which you obviously know at this point. All right, so files are the fundamental units of data storage. You know, they have a name and extension, such as .docx for Word documents, or .txt for text documents, .jpg for image files, and that type of thing. Even .exe for executables. And this also is used to tell Windows what program to open it with. So if you have a document.pdf file and you double click it, it's going to open it with your default PDF reader, whether it's you know Adobe Acrobat Reader or Microsoft Edge. And of course you could change that as well if you have a different type of program that can open those types of files if you want to change the default. Alright, then we have our folders, also known as directories. So these are containers that organize files and other folders, which would be known as subfolders. And that creates a hierarchical structure, kind of like a tree. You can think of it that way. And this helps you categorize and locate your data efficiently. All right, and then we have file paths. So this is the path to get to a particular file or folder. So every file or folder has a unique path that specifies its exact location within the file system. And these paths will start with the drive letter, followed by a series of folder names separated by backslashes and ends with the file name. Assuming you're going to a file name, you could end with a folder name, such as documents here. So for this example, C drive, which is the Windows drive, colon backslash the users folder, 
then within that users folder J Brown, then within J Brown we have documents, then within documents we have the sales list Excel file. So that is a typical file path. All right, so now let's talk about file attributes. So files and folders have associated attributes that define certain characteristics and behaviors, such as read only. So if a file is read only, you cannot modify it. You could open it, you could read it, but you cannot make any changes or save those changes. All right, then we have hidden. So there are plenty of hidden files and folders in Windows, and you could also hide your regular files if you want to keep them hidden from other people. But if you have the option to show hidden files and folders enabled, then they are going to be shown. So let me show you where you find that. All right, so for in File Explorer here, just go to the three dots, the ellipsis here, and you want to go to the Options, which will open Folder Options. And then on the View tab, we have this item here, Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives. So if you do this and apply it, you could also apply it to all folders once you apply it to this folder. And that way, all the hidden files, folders, and drives will also be shown as well. So this could actually come in handy if you're looking for something specific and you can't find it because it's hidden. All right, then we have system files, which are critical to the operating system. You're not going to want to mess with those. And then we have archive files, which is used by backup programs to identify files for archiving. So if you ever heard uh, people mention about having the archive bit set, so that tells your backup program that the file has been modified since the last backup, and then it's ready to be backed up again. All right, then we have file operations. So obviously you've done many or all of these, you know, creating, making a new file or folder, reading, opening and viewing the contents of a file, writing, making a change and saving it, deleting files and folders, uh, moving them from one location to another, either on the same drive or a different drive, and then copying them if you want to make a duplicate, and then renaming them if you need to change the name. All right, so what file systems are supported by Windows 11? So for the most part, you're going to be using NTFS for your file system, new technology file system. So this has been around since Windows XP or even Windows 2000. So this is the default file system used with Windows. So here are some of the features. Large file and volume support. Can handle files and partitions in the terabyte range. You get the advanced permissions and security for access control list, ACLs. You could actually use encryption, EFS, with these files if you want to secure them. Uh, you could compress files and folders to actually save disk space. Then it also provides journaling, which logs changes before they're written, which helps you recover from system crashes. And you could also set disk quotas if you want to limit how much space end users can actually use. All right, then we have FAT32, which has been around for a long time, and it's actually still in use today. It stands for File Allocation Table 32. Uh, broadly compatible with most operating systems and devices. You have a maximum file size of 4 gigabytes and a maximum partition size of 32 gigabytes. So one problem you'll run into if, let's say, you format your flash drive FAT32 and you copy a 5 gigabyte file to it, or you try to, it's not going to work because it's going to be too long. And then you'll end up having to use a different type of format to allow that to be copied there. All right, it does not support file permissions or modern security features like NTFS does. And it's useful for simple storage devices like flash drives and so on. All right, then we have EXFAT, Extended File Allocation Table. So this is more commonly used with flash drives these days compared to FAT32, even SD cards. And you could use it when you have to copy large files. So it was designed to replace FAT32 while maintaining compatibility across platforms. Supports files over 4 gigs and large partitions but it still doesn't have the NTF features like permissions and journaling, but has greater flexibility than FAT32, and it will work with Windows and Mac OS. And then I just wanted to mention REFS, Resilient File System. You're probably not going to see this unless you start working on some Windows servers, uh, because it's not really commonly used, and you can't really use it with um, Windows 11 unless you have Windows 11 Pro for workstations in certain configurations.
All right, so it's a newer file system designed for data integrity, scalability, and resilience. So it offers resilience to corruption. So it uses checksums for metadata to detect and automatically repair data corruption using built-in redundancy. It has greater scalability for large volumes, file sizes, and number of files, more than NTFS. Improved performance with virtualization, such as block cloning and sparse VDL. So no file system journaling like NTFS uses, but it rather uses a copy-on-write model to ensure consistency. And it was designed for storage spaces integration, so it works the best when combined with storage spaces. So storage spaces is a feature of Windows that you could use to do things such as combine multiple drives into a storage pool to greater utilize your storage capacity. All right, so let's hop on the uh, computer one more time here and show you a couple more things before we end this lesson. All right, so just to kind of summarize a couple of points we made here. So if we were to right click on a file, for example, go to its properties, you could see the attributes, which we talked about. You can make it read only if you don't want it to be edited. You can make it hidden, so it'll be hidden unless, of course, somebody has the option to show hidden files and folders, then they'll be able to see it. And then we have advanced here, so this one's already set for archiving with the archive bit. And then you can allow this file to have its contents indexed in addition to the file. And you can turn on file compression if you want to save some space. And encryption's disabled because this is Windows 11 Home, so you don't have the encryption option. Then if we go to the security tab, here's where we see some of the NTFS permissions right here. And then we can see the file location. So that's the path to the file with the date created and modified. Here's the archive bit again, uh, the owner and the computer name. And now we have going back to our SanDisk here. If we were to right click on it and choose format, you can see what options we have here. NTFS, which is what it is now. FAT32 is the default, and we could use EXFAT and also change the label. But if we do that to say this E drive here, we only have NTFS. All right, so there is your basic overview of the Windows 11 file system fundamentals. So hopefully that all made sense. All right, thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe. Thank <music> you.